Today, uh, we're going to just go deep into joy straight away. Let's just stop for a minute and we're just going to sense God. He's always there. He lives in you. And he's all around you. So very gently, we just enjoy that sense of God's love. Mm. It's very gentle and very simple. Enjoying God is the beginning, beginning of a massive world. When you enjoy God, you glorify God. So all of the mystic realms of heaven start with joy. As the scriptures say, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So the way of, of drawing your desires to you is through delight. Wow. Because what you enjoy, you will attract. And God wants you to enjoy him. So mysticism is very simple. We are the people who give ourselves to love. We're not striving for love or looking for love. We found it. Wow. Thank you, Yahweh. So just sense God now. He is there. Let that heavy glory rest on you like snow on a tree. Intoxicating. Blissful. Wow. Mm. Okay. Wow. So this is session one, and I'm going to lay a foundation in this session, and each session will build on it. I want to start with a radical vision, a radical vision of a happy God. The God is essentially the happy being. The God is joy. He is Mr. Joy. He lives in joy. And he came that we might have joy. All the angels are surrounding Yahweh in joyful assembly. Total celebration is always going on around God. And Jesus' prayer in John 17 was, I want you with me where I am. He wants us to live in the center of the party where the joy of the Lord becomes your new way of living. Or as the scriptures say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So throughout church history, the saints were intoxicated by God. When Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit came, they looked like they were drunk. God wants to intoxicate us. So the church was birthed through wine. In fact, the first miracle Jesus did was turn water into wine. And this was to a group of people who'd already had enough to drink. So Psalm 23 says, he fills my cup until it overflows. So it's God's idea to fill the cup. In fact, the new covenant is not more rules. It was actually a cup of wine. He said, this is the new covenant. Drink it. Eat it. <laughs> wow, that's a good covenant. So I want to talk a little bit about the Trinity today. Is that we have to realize the Trinity are a community. Father, Son and Spirit. And yes, they are one. But they are also this beautiful community. And they are love. They are filled with love for each other. They are filled with joy in each other. And that laughter produces love. This is how the early church saw God. They even had a word for this. It's a Greek word, perichoresis, which means this, the great dance. That God is not just dancing. God is dance. God is the great dance. That is how the early church described God. 
they didn't see God as a lonely being on a throne. They didn't see God as an angry person. They saw God as the great dance. They even have a theological word for this, another one. They say this, that God is in celebrative constancy. Yes, constant celebration. He never cools down the, the passion. They live in continual ecstasy. And that ecstasy produced the universe. That is why the universe exists. Because the Trinity wanted to share their life with other beings. And that joy went Bang. So Psalm 1611 says this. It says, in your presence is fullness of joy and total celebration. At your right hand are endless pleasures and eternal delight. That is God. God is not a boring person in the church. God is not religious. God is a dance. God is community. God is laughter and joy. God is radical inclusion. And this is the gospel the early church understood. They were love drunk. They drank from the Trinity. They saw Jesus embracing the world and taking it into the Trinity. That Jesus restores us back into the Trinity. That we are now included in this joy. So Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I came that you may enjoy life until it overflows. So Jesus came to give us life now, to give us joy now, to open up the wine within us now. Wow. <laughs> Not in the future, but now the kingdom of heaven now. Joy now. Wow. Bliss and intoxication now. Well, so Jesus came that you might have life until it overflows. The problem is we keep saying, no, <laughs> I want to work hard for you. I want to be a good Christian. <laughs> I have to pray hard. <laughs> I have to work hard. <laughs> that is not the gospel. Gospel means happy news. And the happy news is this, that you drink him in his holiness becomes your holiness his life becomes your life their, their joy becomes your joy that you are now in them and they are in you and you are one new being you are one spirit with the happy god <laughs> uh, uh, that's good news wow <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well 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 this is good stuff i have told you these things that my joy and delight might be in you and your joy and gladness may be full complete and overflowing so jesus said why he came I already said in John 10, 10, he came that we might have life, God's life, a new beyond human life. I came that you might be beyond human. And I also came that your joy would be full. In fact, he said, this is amazing. Are you ready? He said he wants his joy to be in you. The joy of the Lord. How much joy does God have? To be infinitely glorious is to be infinitely happy. God is infinitely glorious and he is infinitely happy. Think about this. Jesus came to take the joy of the Trinity, the life of the Trinity, the celebration of the Trinity and squeeze it into you. This is why we get intoxicated. This is why I have ecstasies. This is why sometimes I can't move. I can't speak because he's pouring the wine into my mouth. But I tell you what, this is not foolish. This wine gives you wisdom. This wine gives you strength. 
This wine gives you pleasure and joy. This wine opens you up to the angelic. This wine opens you up to the heavens. This wine fills you with knowledge. See, I want you to think about something. When you drink wine, real wine, what is in it? When you drink wine, you drink the DNA of grapes. You can tell the color of the grape. You can tell which country it was from. Wine experts even know which field a grape is from. So when you drink the wine, you drink the life story of the grape. When we drink the new covenant, we drink the DNA of Yeshua. We have the flavor of Christ, the history of his life, divine DNA. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So this is the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant, lots of rules, laws. That is not the new covenant. The new covenant, God has done away with that. Goodbye, rules. And instead, it's a cup of wine. And all we can do is drink it. All we can do is let the God himself possess us and we become his body. In the old covenant, God was in the ark. Over there, behind a screen, only the priest could go in once a year. But Jesus, with his body, ripped open it was and he little. stepped into your body. We are the body of the Trinity. We are the body of Christ. We are a mystical church. We are a wine cellar opened. We are the rivers of Eden pouring out. And what does the word Eden mean? Eden means pleasure. Adam and Eve came from the garden of pleasure. The word Eden also means delights. So we are the people of pleasure and delight. We are those that pour wine out and intoxicate the earth. We are those that pour out rivers of refreshing everywhere we go. This is the gospel. God in you. You in God. You are the ecclesia. It's not a building. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow. Woohoo. Woohoo. So God is happy. God will always be happy. We can choose to experience that or reject that. Everybody okay so far? Okay, now I'm going to share screen. This is the Trinity. This is God in joy. They embrace each other. They enter into each other. They permeate each other. They live in each other. They are one in being. And they are one in the intimacy of their friendship. And they laugh. The Father laughs at the Son. And the Son laughs at the Father. And the laughing brings forth pleasure. And the pleasure brings forth joy and the joy brings forth love. And this is what created the universe. So it made all of these dimensions that exist. The multi-dimensions of the universe came from love. This is a picture from quantum physics. It shows a multi-dimensional universe. All of this is inside God. It's not outside God because God fills everything. It's inside him. In him we live and move and have our being. That's what Paul said. We are in him. So the first letter of the Bible is the Hebrew word Beit. This is an important letter because Beit means in. All of us are in. It also means family. It's the Hebrew letter for house. So the Bible starts with in. We, are, we have always been in. We will always be in. We are family. We are his house. Woohoo! <laughs> this is good. So Yahweh cr made creation inside himself. It's inside him and he fills it. Isaiah 6 says the whole earth is filled with his glory. The room you are in right now is full of glory. We cannot go anywhere from his presence. He is the air we are breathing now. Just breathe. 
Feel it. Sense it. The Ruach, the breath of Yahweh. And God created from within himself all these heavenly realms. All of them are in him. But this is the mystery of the gospel because you're in God and God is in you. All of these realms are within you too. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. The throne is within you. Eden is within you. The courts of heaven is within you. The angelic canopy is inside you. You already have it. And all the stars and galaxies are waiting to see what you have. All creation is groaning for the revealing of the sons of God. It is a great dance where everything is turning, everything is moving, and it's waiting for us to free it from death and decay. And the earth, scripture says, was made from the, from the deep. That deep in Hebraic is not water, it is actually the deep of the mysteries of God's heart. So even the earth is special. The earth was made from the mysteries of Yahweh. It is a multi-dimensional world. Our physical bodies are made from it. So we are made from the mysteries of God and the God loves the world. So the world is a part of this too. And Adam was made from breath and mystery. And the Hebrew word Adam has a special meaning. In Hebrew it is Aleph Dam. Dam means blood. We are God's blood in creation. We are a special species. Wow. We are God with a face. We are God's blood. And we have the DNA of Yahweh. Wow. Which is Jacob's ladder, a dimensional um, realm. Within our body, we, we have the record of the mysteries of God. We carry within us the tree of life and we are called to release life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life until it overflows. So the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory. This is our mandate and role for the future is to fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory. And the glory is God's joy and goodness and to govern time and space to release joy so that time follows God's blueprint and even transforms the solar systems and galaxies. And we are filled with his thoughts and we become the carriers of the mysteries of God. We become the oracles, the, the, the prophets of life into every dimension that exists. And we release light, joy, immortality. Okay, so let me just talk again and say it's all about joy god is happy it's all about love god is love it's all about restoring life you are the house of wine you already have it and we have to start to explore it so in the beginning better she in the beginning god created a family god created a home he made other creatures to create with him and scripture says the first creature he made was wisdom. So God made the family bigger. And wisdom is God's play partner. Ooh. She helped make the cosmos. We can read about it in Proverbs. I'm going to read it to you because it's very intoxicating. Yeah, because now there's not just the Trinity. There's wisdom and angels and creatures. Wow. She said this. In the beginning, I was there. Wisdom was there in the beginning. I love wisdom. She says, for God possessed me before he created the universe. So even before God made all of this, he made this being. She says, from eternity past, I was set in place. Before the world began, I was anointed from the beginning. And the Passion Translation says this really fun line. It says, I was there dancing. Other translations say rejoicing. So she was very happy. <laughs> she was dancing. The word there, dancing, also could be translated playing. And the root word there means something that's done for fun. So the universe was created for fun. It's a big party. <laughs> it's a cosmic party. 
It's an interdimensional party. So wisdom was with him. And she continues to say, I was with him as an artist. That's the word that's used in English, artisan, artist. I was his delight day by day, Proverbs says. So think about this, friends. The first job description in the Bible is artist. So before you were made, there was laughter. There was dance. There was art. This is why babies can dance before they walk. You play music and they'll start moving. This is why babies can sing before they talk, because singing, dancing, playing is the Trinity life. And you can see it all in a baby. Play, they sing, they dance. Why? Because this is the Trinity flowing into creation. And children can draw or do art before they can write. Every human being is an artist because we were birthed from wisdom we were birthed from art and the goal of the trinity is to include us in co-creating to learn to dance sing create play release joy it is not miserable preachers it is a joy explosion it is a song and a dance and a musical it includes animals, trees, plants. Wow. It is wow. joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Woo-hoo. So I'm ending my session now. The not only was the Trinity happy and wisdom, they created more beings than you can ever imagine. And when the earth was created from the mysteries of God, they shouted for joy. And Job verse 38, uh, chapter 38, verse 7 says, when God created the earth, the stars sang together. So even stars can sing. And it says all the sons of God shouted for joy. As Martin Luther said, the gospel is nothing less than laughter and joy. The stars sang, the suns shouted, wisdom rejoiced, the Trinity laughed. And this is why we should be intoxicated. This is why we should be mystically happy, because each and every one of us is included. Included in great dance. Amen. I mean. Thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. It's good news. Just breathe in now. Breathe in. Amen. I mean.